God bless you and God bless the United States of America. That's Laura Ingram. That looked horrible and it screwed me up at the beginning of the segment. Fox News host, author, radio personality, LeBron James hater, and proud owner of a minivan. And by the way, I happen to love my minivan. It rocks. Laura Ann Ingram was born in the early 60s in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Her father, who her brother says was a Nazi sympathizer, worked for Pratt & Whitney, an aerospace manufacturing company. Ingram says her mother, the daughter of Polish immigrants, waited tables until she was 73. Ingram attended Dartmouth College in the 80s, where she was the first female editor of the Dartmouth Review, a conservative student newspaper. According to a 1984 New York Times piece, the paper had been criticized for articles deriding blacks, women, and minorities. For one story in the paper, Ingram reportedly sent an undercover reporter posing as someone questioning their sexuality to a private support group for closeted students on campus. Ingram's clandestine reporter recorded the meeting and published excerpts from it, including students students describing their sexual experiences and their sexual identities. Ingram also reportedly sent the tapes of the meeting to the students' parents and described those in the meeting as cheerleaders for latent campus sodomites. I love seeing students making a difference in, in, on college campuses that are supposed to be places where free exchange of ideas take place, except when you happen to be a conservative and you're trying to make a point. So, the Review is a good training ground. The Review's faculty advisor, Jeffrey Hart, described Ingram as having the most extreme anti-homosexual views imaginable. She went so far as to avoid a local eatery where she feared the waiters were homosexual and might touch her silverware or spit in her food, exposing her to AIDS. Girls will be boys and boys will be girls, creating a safe, supportive school environment for trans, intersex, gender variant, and gender questioning youth. If you're conf confused, well, buy a Bible with me, because I have no idea what's going on with it. After graduating from Dartmouth in 1985, with a degree and tons of extracurricular experience in homophobia, Ingram became a speechwriter in the Reagan administration for Secretary of Education William Bennett. She left Washington to attend law school at the University of Virginia and drive around Charlottesville in a Honda hatchback with a vanity license plate that read, For Right. After graduating law school, she clerked for the Second Circuit Court in New York and went back to Washington, clerking for Clarence Thomas on the Supreme court. After a stint with Thomas, Ingram went to work as a white-collar criminal defense lawyer for the law firm Skadden Arps, where she defended giant corporations. In 1998, Ingram attended several parties, including John McCain's Holiday Bash, where her plus one was none other than infamous beer fan Brett Kavanaugh. I, at, at Skadden, I think I, I learned that you shouldn't get accused of anything, because if you're just accused, it can ruin your life. After making connections and strides as a young Republican, Ingram was featured on the cover of the New York Times Magazine in 1995 for a story on young conservative minds. Around this time, George Conway, now married to Kellyanne Conway, was pursuing Ingram. He invited Ingram on all-expense-paid ski trips and island holidays before striking gold with the hilarious Kellyanne Conway. But you know, everybody's wondering about my leg, is the first thing they ask. Kelly, what happened to your leg? I'm like, well, everybody heard I was going to be in this comedy show, and they're like, break a leg. So I did. And you think dumb, blondes are dumb. Ingram left the law after realizing that she, according to her website, would rather put pins in her corneas than write another legal memo. I'm a recovering lawyer. I'm Laura Ingram, and I was a lawyer, yes. In 1996, she joined MSNBC as an on-air political friend, as her website says the network put it. In 1998, she was given her own show on MSNBC, Watch It, with Laura Ingram, where she discussed the Clinton administration and played Bob Dylan, famous artist made popular by sticking it to fascism through protest songs during the commercial breaks. Dylan played on, but it was all over for Ingram. Uh, I was at MSNBC, and then no longer at MSNBC, I was not renewed. The network canceled the show after just 17 months. In 2001, Ingram launched The Laura Ingram Show, a nationally syndicated radio show. Okay, who left the Sharpies here? Why is the Sharpie box open and on my desk? Okay, does someone use my honey? Because the honey is down to here and it used to... 
Her success in radio eventually paved the way for her very own segment on Bill O'Reilly's show, The Ingram Angle, where Bill O'Reilly constantly berated her. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. We're going to get very specific, as I told you. Yeah, before I am going to get specific. Air. If you let me talk, I will get specific. Well, Can you, I finish my sentence? No. You are a blind ideologue <laughs> who, even if somebody's nice to you, won't admit it because yeah. you're. I'm Talk sure about a Kool-Aid drinker. Yeah. Yeah, come on. But she managed to sometimes get a few words in. Words Fox News loved. And she was given her own show in October of 2017 after Bill O'Reilly resigned in the wake of multiple sexual harassment allegations. The debut, Laura Ingram Live, the Ingram Angle, and I'm so proud of you and happy for you. Wish you all the success. She's been stirring things up ever since. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, Shut up and dribble. Of course, LeBron went on to open a school for at-risk third and fourth graders. Free tuition, free uniforms, free breakfast, lunch and snacks, free transportation, a bike and a helmet, access to a food pantry for their family, and guaranteed tuition for all graduates to the University of Akron. Laura Ingram just continued doing what she's best at. Because in some parts of the country, it does seem like the America that we know and love doesn't exist anymore. Massive demographic changes have been foisted upon the American people. And they're changes that none of us ever voted for and most of us don't like. From Virginia to California, we see stark examples of how radically, in some ways, the country has changed. Now, much of this is related to both illegal and, in some cases, legal immigration that, of course, progressives love. Ingram, who adopted three children from Guatemala and Russia, and whose mother was a daughter of Polish immigrants, claimed that this segment wasn't racist, but the racists thought it was. David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the KKK, applauded this segment as one of the most important, truthful, monologues in the history of MSM. She didn't say his name, but the next night, Ingram called Duke a racist freak who doesn't share her views about the views they share. It took severe backlash for her to get to this point. Ingram, who is the author of SHUT UP AND SING, a commentary on why entertainers should not express their political beliefs, seems to have shifted her tone when entertainers share her political beliefs. During the Obama era, Ingram went after Michelle Obama for inviting Common, a foul-mouthed poet, to the White House. Common being invited to the White House by Michelle Obama is an outrage. Flotus should be helping flood victims, not foul-mouthed poets. And she attacked the Obama administration for inviting Beyonce and Jay-Z to the White House. Who can forget Beyonce and Jay-Z in the Situation Room? That made me feel good about Americans' national security, yeah. But under Trump, Ingram seems to be okay with foul-mouthed poets who she once thought should just shut up and sing. And who would have thought that a bad boy like Kim Kardashian's husband could be the catalyst for an honest discussion about the coerced conformity of thought that the celebrity culture has imposed on all of us. Ingram's pattern of attacking the Obamas but praising the Trumps for the exact same things is nothing new to her. May I ask a question about Michelle? Does this woman have an allergic reaction to sleeves? And now, get this, according to some in the media, she can't even decorate the White House for Christmas properly. For a brief moment, Ingram was reportedly considered as press secretary after Spicer departed and Scaramucci was fired. But she felt she would be more helpful to the administration in her current position, according to her friends that she definitely has. So she stayed at Fox and worked for Trump simultaneously, amplifying the president's rhetoric to the masses five nights a week. 